In this video, we're going to introduce you to the RStudio environment and also show you how you can use RStudio to investigate numeric variables and their distributions. Now, you should have already downloaded RStudio on your desktop or at least be working at a computer which has RStudio installed. To open RStudio, look for a circle with an R on it. And you have to a little, be a little bit careful at this point because there's also the R console which is probably installed. And just to show you kind of the difference between the two, if I enter my program files, you'll see there's a file for R and RStudio. And with R, the icon that you would typically see on the desktop just looks like an R. But with RStudio, it has a little circle around it. Yay. So once you've opened up RStudio and are ready to go, then the first step is we're going to import some data to work with. Now, the thing with RStudio is that, and R in general, is that it's much easier to work with CSV files than Excel files. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the students 15 Excel file that we had in last week's lab video, and we're first going to go and save it as a CSV file for comma delimited. Right. Now I've already done that, but you should take a moment to do that on your computer. After you've done so, you can return to RStudio, go to import data set, locate the place on your computer where you saved your CSV file, make sure, make sure it says CSV next to it, open it up, and check to make sure that when you upload it, this, this sort of heading yes is highlighted as opposed to heading no. See, if I click on heading no, notice that the variable names are actually stored as observations instead of the titles for the columns, which is what we want. So after you import the data, it should show up in the upper left-hand corner of the RStudio environment. And now you have a variable saved in your workspace called students15. So students15 is what we call a data frame object. And each column is a different variable, which you can also access. So if, for example, I wanted to look at the risk scores of all students, I would type the name of my data frame, in this case, students15. Then to separate out the variable name that I want to look at, we use the dollar sign command and then risk.score for the risk.score variable. And if I enter that, notice I'll get a list which contains risk scores from all students in the survey. If I want to summarize those risk scores, look at some of the summary statistics we've talked about in class. Well, first of all, the up arrow will cycle back to my previous command, which, you know, being the lazy person I am avoids me having to type a little bit. And then I'm just going to add the command summary in front of it, put parentheses around the variable I'd like to look at the summary of, hit enter. And notice that, min, that R Studio will spit out the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the mean, the third quartile, and the maximum for, for this particular variable. It does not include the SD. If you do want the SD, again, up arrow, previous command, just change the summary to SD, and you'll get the standard deviation as well to include in your summary statistics. We've also talked about various plots you can make with numeric variables, the simplest being a histogram. To create a histogram, the command hist will immediately populate a histogram at the right. Now notice that this histogram doesn't look so nice. It has, you know, the, the sort of variable name in the RStudio environment down here and up here. There's lots of options you can that, that R has for modifying the look of histograms. You can find out a little about these using the help menu and typing in hist. When you do so, you'll see the help menu for hist and you can see that the the sort of syntax for using this command. The first argument is the variable that you're trying to make a histogram of, but then there's a whole bunch of other possible arguments here, most of which you may never use, but it's, it's nice to know where to find them in case you do. Now, the, the three that are most useful, I think, are the breaks command, which modifies the number of bins used in the histogram, uh, and also these xlab, ylab commands, which help you change the titles of the x and y axes and the main command, which changes the title of the whole histogram itself. So just to illustrate, let's go back to our previous histogram here. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the X lab to risk score, because that's actually what's plotted on the X axis. 
and I'm going to completely get rid of the main title on the graph. Notice that anything that I want actually displayed, I, I enclosed in double quotation marks. Okay. So when we do this, we get a new plot, which at least doesn't have these weird variable titles. You could call it something else if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, and so if you compare that with the previous one, it just changed the x-axis in the main title. Now, if you wanted to look at a finer parsing of the variable risk score, we could also include a breaks argument in there. And breaks can simply just be a number, which increases the number of breakpoints to use when creating bins. So for example, if I use breaks equals 20, notice my histogram now parses the data up into smaller intervals. And this kind of reveals different features of the data set. In this case, it doesn't really change sort of what you might say that much here. Another type of display we discussed with numeric variables is called a box, is a box plot, right? So I'm going to leave the same X label and main, but I'm just going to change this hist to a box plot here. And now we get a box plot of the risk scores of the students. And this, this kind of shows you that, well, there was one outlier with a risk score of more than 45, uh, but the majority of students had kind of risk scores between it looks like maybe 33 and you know 27 or so in fact we could get the exact values by looking back at the summer statistics here right. so if you're okay so far then take a deep breath and continue on because the other thing we'd like to do is be able to compare the distribution of a numeric variable across different categories or different subsets of the population so for example, let's suppose that we wanted to compare the risk scores for different primary major groups. Kind of like in the first lab, we, we compared the low and risk, high risk takers across different primary majors. Well, one thing we can do is look at the summary statistics. Now in R, if you want to kind of apply a command across different categories, the T apply command is extremely useful. And the way that the T apply command works is the first argument you enter here is the variable that we're trying to work with. So we're trying to work with risk score. But then you enter a second argument separated by a comma, right? Which gives a categorical variable that splits the population into groups. So in our case, we want the categorical variable primary dot major. And finally, the last argument is the command which you would like to apply to each subset given by the categorical splitting variable. So in our case, what I'd like to do is just summarize the risk scores for each group. So when we do that, you can see we get now uh, not just one list of min, you know, five number summary and mean, but we get five separate lists for each different subset of our population. Right, which is useful for comparison purposes. You could do the same thing here if you wanted to compare the standard deviations. For example, you would just change this last argument to SD, and then it would give you the standard deviation within each group. Now, box plots, as we've mentioned, are also useful for comparing a numeric variable across groups. And so let's go back to the command where we entered the box plot in the first place. It's really simple to modify the box plot command in R to include a categorical variable. The syntax is to use the tilde operator. So this tilde in R basically means as, as a function of. So what we want to do is when we look at student risk score as a function of students major. All right. So if I do this and now I'm going to change this actually, because I, I want the, the majors to, to display on the x-axis, I'm just going to change the title to box plot of risk score by major. Okay. And now we see we have all five groups separated out and we have box plots for these majors. Now, one final tip for cleaning up this graph is if you'll notice on this axis down here that not all the group names show up and that's because they're too long to fit on the graph. And that's easily modified by the names option within the box plot framework. So what names does is it specifies a list of names that you can use. So you can specify them to be whatever you want, and it will display those names in the appropriate order on the x-axis of a box plot. Now, to, the syntax is we start off with C. C is the R command for concatenate or putting together. Right? Then we enter the first group name 
enclosed by double quotes. The second group name, now they were, they're in alphabetical order, so the second one was the engineering group. The third group name, humanities. The fourth group name, which was natural science. And the fifth group name, which was social science. Right? So now if I replot this, we now see that all, all five groups do get labeled in some manner, so at least we can distinguish between them for analysis. Now, if you want to include these graphs in a report, that's also very simple. There's an export command here where you can either copy it to your clipboard and then just directly paste it into Word or actually save it as some sort of image file. So I hope this is enough to get you started with RStudio. We will be using this and further investigating some of its properties in future labs, but it is a very powerful tool for the analysis of statistical data.